Okay, just did the cleaver. And sharpened it, and boy is it sharp. Uh, this is sold. I am going to ask a little less than I originally told the fellow. Actually, I think I already told him that. Yeah, I did. Because I didn't have to pay as much for this. And I'm trying to new, a new tact that eventually everybody else will figure out. Uh, I don't bid on anything until like two minutes before the auction closes. And uh, what I bid is what I'm willing to pay for something. And if somebody outbids me, so be it, you know? I mean, I'm sure other people have the same idea. But I figure what I'm willing to pay for something, the maximum, and I just put that bid. And uh, if somebody is willing to pay more, you know, it's that's the game. Although, you do have people that have found this place. Remember the beanie baby craze where people were spending for, you know, like a rare Beanie Baby. They were spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars for them. And these things are worth like 25 cents, you know? And uh, I actually had, years ago, uh, the manager, the terminal manager of a company that I was leased my truck to, the terminal manager, lost his house. It was just like gambling. Lost his job. Because they fired him because he wouldn't stay off eBay buying these silly frickin' Beanie Babies. Well, it's the same mentality that have found this auction. And uh, these people are betting, rid bidding ridiculous amounts of money for knives that are... Uh, I'll give you an example. There's a big Schrade knife similar to the big... Uh, I don't have it here. Uh, similar to the big... Here it is. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't as big as this, but it was a big knife made by Schrade. Uh, Chinese made, you know, it's not well made, but it's decent. And right now you can buy it at Walmart for $20 with a sheath. Well, I bid a buck, you know, I could clean it up and make a sheath and maybe sell it for 20 bucks. And then all of a sudden there's this bidding war over this $20 knife and they bid that knife up to $25 with no sheath in need of restoration and I believe it's the same mentality that we're buying the Beanie Babies and which made the Beanie Babies if you're young you probably don't remember that but uh, yeah it was almost painful to watch people spend good hard-earned money on these little 25 cent stuffed with beans animals uh you know toy animals that you would like give a dog and uh yeah i actually knew a guy who lost his job lost his house all over beanie babies and it's the same addiction that people have to gambling you know, i personally have witnessed a person put hundred dollar bills into a gambling machine and then win, you know, three, four, five hundred bucks and brag about it and completely forget about the thousand dollars he put in that machine. It's, uh, you know, a bit of a sickness, I think, a bit of an addiction. And that's what's happening at this auction. People are bidding, not because they really want something, but because winning means more to them than the actual object that they're bidding on. And uh, I'm seeing that in some of the knives and stuff that people are bidding on and uh, it's really I may have to stop bidding because you know uh, eventually those people are going to all find that place and it'll be the new chain smokers gambling uh, you know hangout where they're all putting crazy bids on trying to win something that's worth five bucks and they're spending 30 bucks on it it's just uh, winning uh, I've witnessed it Charlie and I years ago went to a storage auction only one we ever went to. And we saw that happen at the storage action. These people, you could look in the storage room and see there was, you know, $30 worth of, at best, junk there. And these people were up 
in the hundreds of dollars betting against each other for something that was clearly 20, 30, 40 dollars worth of stuff in there. And it was really something to see. We never went to another one after that. And I see that in gamblers. And uh, I saw that in the Beanie Baby crazy people. And uh, now I'm seeing it on the people that are bidding on these auctions. They're bidding just uh, completely ridiculous amounts of money for things that are nowhere near the value that... And they don't care. It's not about the object. It's about winning. Okay, enough. Now, I've done everything I can here today. Oh, no, I haven't. I'm going to clean this up. And then I'm spending the rest of the afternoon... Sanding on that knife right there. We'll be back. Oh, Alrighty. Come out nice. And this is the uh, John Primble. Hold on, let me zero in here. John Primble. Belk Knapp Hardware and Manufacturing Company. And this is the number, 3335 with a Stara. Can you see the star? Okay. And uh, the other blades look similar. You know, I had to, I did have to sand rust off of it. And I did not sharpen it. I haven't touched anything. You know, maybe I'll go ahead and sharpen this blade. Yeah, I'll do that. Just because whoever buys this might want to use it. The other blades are okay. And I don't want to, you know, you got to, there's a balance between uh, moderate restoration and ruining something. And I'm trying to find that balance like uh, this. I didn't go crazy. I didn't even, I didn't sharpen this. Um, this, one of these, what do you call them? Uh, points has a, just a slight bend in it. I'm not going to mess with that. This is all stuff that has been earned over, you know, 100 years of use. And uh, this is sold. This is the Sheffield Cutlery. Uh, uh, cleaver. Uh, Bowie's up there. Okay, now, um, oh yeah, I'm gonna ask this fella if he's interested in this. I don't want much for it. I'm not giving a lot for these. And you know, I'm spending maybe a couple hours cleaning them up. So it's not like I have a lot of time or money invested in them. So I don't have to ask a lot for them. Uh, basically, shipping is, you know, gonna be a, a third of what I ask for them. All right, that's it for today. I mean, here, I'm fixing to turn around and get my butt to sand it. I'm giving this away, so I'll put that over there. And I still, I don't know anything about this yet. Let me see if I can open this up, if it's got any writing here. It does, let me get my magnifying glass out. What does that say, LXL George? Nothing on that end. So I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that L X L George knife, pocket knife, two blade knife, and I'll see if anything comes up. Man, the internet's an amazing thing. This is 1930s era, and it's I X L George Wastenholm, made in Sheffield, England, 1930s era. Uh, and the, the, the lack of metal bolsters is what gives it away as uh, 1930s because in the 1940s they started using metal bolsters on either end where they hammer the pins through. So uh, 
not high value, it's like 50 bucks. I'm not gonna do anything to it. I may take some steel wool, knock a little rust off, and then put some oil on the blade so they won't get any further rust. But uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. If anybody had an interest in it, I would sell it. But uh, otherwise, uh, I think if I do anything to it, it will really take from the value. I mean, besides take some steel wool, rub the blades down, put some oil on the blades, and that would be it. Alrighty. Let's turn around and get to work. All right. Now, I buff. Handles are gonna look nice, real nice. Uh, I buff and, uh, and then we get it in the heat treating forge and in the tempering oven. All right, let's go get really dirty. Now, now we buff. I think I forgot to show this to you. Still got, you know, that's oil and from this. All right. Let that heat up. Then we're gonna pop it in the oven there. All right. I just opened it. It's gonna come back up. I'm uh, tempering it in my heat treating, my, I'm tempering it in my straightening jig. Uh, there's no warp. I just want to make sure it doesn't warp. Turn this up just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. Oh, Lordy. I'm gonna watch this. I just wanna be sure this comes back up to 400. But other than that, we'll see you tomorrow.